He's a Milwaukee bartender now at the center of an investigation into a severed leg. 12 News Investigates is learning more about Maxwell Anderson, including what law enforcement sources tell us they found in his basement. Anderson has not been charged. At the same time, 19-year-old Shade Robinson has been missing for 10 days. Police say she was last seen April 1st with her burnt car later found near 30th and Lisbon. This past weekend, investigators discovered human remains near 31st and Galena over three consecutive days. Now, this is the second place a body part was found in Milwaukee County in a week. That severed leg was found in Warnemont Park in Cudahy on April 2nd. 12 News' Hannah Hilliard is live outside Anderson's home near 39th in Oklahoma. And Hannah, you've been looking into his past all day long. Yeah, Joyce and Patrick, and we have uncovered a lot, including Anderson's ties to Waukesha County and what sources are telling us investigators found inside this home exactly one week ago. This is the man behind bars, but not yet charged. In the interest of Maxwell Stephen Anderson. Appearing in court in connection to a case that's captivated Milwaukee. Who is Maxwell Anderson? We know he's a Southside resident whose house at 39th in Oklahoma was searched by investigators. Two days after, someone found a severed leg on the Lake Michigan shore in Cudahy. 12 News has confirmed the 33-year-old man has ties to Waukesha County, attending Kettle Moraine, Catholic Memorial, and Pewaukee High Schools in the early 2000s. Anderson has a criminal record, a 2014 misdemeanor disorderly conduct conviction in Waukesha County after an incident with a family member in Delafield, and in 2015, a misdemeanor domestic violence case out of Door County. For the last few years, he's worked at several Milwaukee bars. He works full time, including the rave from 2018 to 2020, most recently working at Victor's nightclub on the east side. A woman who claims she met Anderson there spoke to 12 News by phone, but asked not to be identified out of fear for her safety. She says he once invited her to his south side home. I remember there being something about a hole in the yard, um, and this was back in fall. I remember asking about it, and he was like, oh, I'm building a garden. In a view from News Chopper 12. All right, that looks like a hole there, actually. A gaping hole next to Anderson's house was visible earlier this week. Inside the home? And when I got in, it just kind of seemed like he was in the middle of a whole bunch of renovations, but kind of seems like the kind of guy that never would finish them. Thursday, 12 News learned from multiple law enforcement sources Anderson had what is described as a sex dungeon in his basement. So I got a little bit of a tour, and he was like, do you want to see the basement? And I was like, no, I'm okay. He's like, it's creepy down there. And I was like, no, that's okay. Now, Hannah, Anderson hasn't been charged, but is still being held after almost a week in jail. Right, Joy. So the court did give prosecutors an additional 72 hours to either charge Anderson or release him. Those 72 hours run out tomorrow morning. We will, of course, be sure to stay on top of any developments and bring them to you as they happen on air and online. Hannah Hilliard live in Milwaukee. And as we have been reporting, that 72 hour hold on Maxwell Anderson expires tomorrow. We asked legal expert Craig Mastantuno about what could happen next. If he's released, that doesn't stop prosecutors and police for, from continuing to gather evidence uh, and potentially charge Mr. Anderson at a later date. In other words, tomorrow's not a dismissal or move forward date. It's a move forward with a complaint or release the suspect.